Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's time to get into the bike. Wahoo in the boat, baby! Look at that kickfish right there. I mean, you talk about epic fishing days. Yeah! Nice bull dolphin right there. good practices and how to set your drag for planet troll. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grab a snangler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright folks, so like I said, we're going over how to set your drag for trolling with these. These are planters. Planter trolling is one of the most productive forms of trolling for getting down in the water column and finding fish that are not necessarily up on top. More often than not, you are successful once you learn the art and the good practice of planter trolling. However, there is a little bit of a learning curve. You're going to have to sort of get down to basics. You're going to need the gear. You're going to need a big conventional reel. My reel happens to be a Penn International 30 spooled with 80 pound braid and it's on a seven foot custom trolling rod, all roller guides. Then you're gonna need your planer. You know, they got bigger planers and they got smaller planers, and I'll go over the difference of how they affect your drag setting in a minute. Then you're gonna need your leader, at least 100 feet of leader. And of course, at the end of all this goodness is gonna be your lure. Strip bait lure, spoon, whatever it might be. And if you want to, you tip it with a Benita strip. So the good practice is you dunk in your lure, you unwind your leader from your yo-yo, you release your bail, and you let your planer into the water. You let out about 100 or so, 150 feet of main line, and then you set your rod in the gunnel, in the rod holder, and you're going to lock up your rip. Now here comes the part about setting the drag. When it comes to setting your drag for planer trolling, the best advice I can give you is you're going to want to use a lever drag. So the lever drag allows you to tighten or loosen the amount of resistance placed on your reel between your reel and your planer pretty much seamlessly. It's not like a star drag where you got to consistently spin and loosen. Now another factor of why it's important is when you hit your fish, you're going to want to loosen your drag. You can't be sitting here unwinding it and, you know, having a fish try to run underneath a really tight drag. You just lever drag, you know, you pull it back and you're done. So let's get into the little bit of a science behind setting your drag. I'm going to explain this as simply as I know how to do it. And it all starts with your reel. First, you're going to need to find your preset. Most lever drag reels have a preset. My preset is this dial right here, and here's my lever. If you're at ground zero, what I gotta say, you've never been out, you're getting out, you're excited, you're gonna go try and do some planter trolling for the first time, or you've got a brand new reel. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put your reel in free spool. Then you're gonna tighten your preset. Never tighten your preset when you are in gear and you have drag on. If you do, you'll mess up the whole setting and you'll have to pull it back to free spool and re-loosen your preset and start all over. So back to it, right? You got a new reel or it's your first time. You're gonna start with your preset at zero. You're gonna start with your reel in free spool. What you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten your preset to maybe about halfway. Tighten it all the way, figure out where halfway is, and then lock up your reel, about half the distance of the motion of the lever drag, and let out your planer. See what it does. Are you good to go? Is it tight enough? Again, you've gotta, before you even let it go, see if you, you're able to pull it out easily. If you can't really pull it out easily, but you can get a little bit out, you're probably right about there. So you get it rolling, see what happens. Are you getting creep? So if you're getting an obnoxious amount of creep, you're gonna have to make an adjustment. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna paw your reel 
so that you are holding your spool. Put it in free spool, slow your boat down, otherwise you're gonna, you know, if you're doing six knots and you're trying to do this, you're gonna lose a lot of line, you're gonna bird nest your reel. Slow your boat down, paw your reel, reel and free spool, tighten one to two turns on your preset, depending upon how bad your creep was, and then go back to that, you know, midway point so that you're good to go. Set it back down, get up and rolling. Make sure your planer is set. If your planer's not set, you're never going to know. But trust me, if you're getting creep, your planer's set. Get up and rolling. Once you get dialed in and you get it tuned into where you're not getting creep, good to go. Then you start testing, you know, the forces of nature. If you go into a following sea, see what happens if you're getting creep. How much further do you got to push it? Do you, if you're getting a little bit of creep and you got to lock it up full tilt, you might want to consider going back slowing down pawing the reel free spool maybe give it another turn and so you might have to go a little bit less than all the way get up trolling if your creep comes when you're going against the current or you're in a following seat and the waves are pushing your boat then you only may have to turn it up just a little bit put that little bit of heat on it to get that creep stop and that's the basics behind how you set your drag and how you find that sweet spot and how you get tuned in, learning to know your reel from the get-go. And once you get dialed in, it's gonna be the same. Now, of course, you know, let's say you got your favorite number six planer and then hey, I wanna switch it up to a number three. You're not gonna have to go as tight on that drag to, you know, make sure you're not getting any creep from a smaller planer because of the resistance from the plate. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a science to it, but it's not too tricky. What you're going to find is that when you initially set out your planer, you're going to get what's called creep, which means your planer is putting a bunch of resistance on your reel and it's going to pull out drag. It's going to pull out line because of the resistance it's putting on it. And the way you stop that is by tightening your drag. What you want is you don't want to have your preset set so loose that you've got to push your lever drag all the way to full tight when you're beginning to troll. What happens is sometimes you'll get a following C or you're going against the current. That actually puts more resistance on your planer, which means in certain instances, you actually will have to go from an average setting of drag. And you'll have to tighten it a little bit more just so you're not getting creep. And then once you turn to go back out against the waves, then you can loosen it back up so you can hear the strike. Another thing that heightens the amount of resistance is also the size of your planer. The bigger the planer you got, like a number six, is going to put more resistance against your drag. The smaller the planer you have, obviously, is going to put less resistance against your drag. So what I'm trying to explain to folks how to set their drag, what I try to tell them to do is you've got this range of motion for your lever. It's usually like a half moon shape. You've got free spool, and then you've got Full, full on drag. I say set your preset so that you can usually put your lever right in about the middle, maybe a little bit past the middle of its full range of motion so that you're not getting any creep when you're in an average situation. So what that means is you're not going in a following C and you're not going against the current. You don't have an over abundance of amount of resistance putting on you're in an average situation. You're going with the current. You're going into the waves. Now, if you turn and you're going and you have a falling sea and the waves are pushing your boat and you're starting to get creep, that's when you have this extra distance of your lever to sort of push it up and tighten it down so that will stop the creep from happening. Creep is all a part of planar trolling. You're gonna have to learn to deal with it and learn to overcome and think on your feet a little bit when it starts happening. Sometimes you'll put your reel all the way up to full even when it's got good settings on it and you're still not able to stop creep. You'll just have to realize what it is that's happening. Are you in a following sea and going against the current? Sometimes that's just too much to do it. So you have to either change up your game plan, your trolling uh, you know, coordinates or the, the way you're trolling in the sea or go with a smaller planer or something like that. Solutions, not problems. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust our preset 
so that we can put our lever right in about the middle, right? Let's say we get a hit. So what we do is after the fish takes its initial run, we want to pull back on our lever so that while we're winding in the fish, he can run if he wants to. You don't want to have your drag set so tight that you can't pull out on it because it's made for a planer not to be able to pull out on it. I'm going to give you another piece of advice. If you've got your average setting for your drag for let's say size 6 planer and you can pull it out by your hand without any much resistance, it's not tight enough. It takes a lot to pull out drag for a number 6 planer. All right, another piece of advice when it comes to planer trolling because of this drag, okay? And if I say anything else that you take away from this video, please understand the reasoning behind this. Braid is always your best bet when it comes to planer trolling. First, it makes your planer dive steady. It doesn't have stretching and retracting like monofilament mainline. Next, when it comes to using monofilament, you've got to crank down on your drag sometimes so that it's not creeping out. You've got a lot of resistance being put behind your boat from the pull of the planer. What happens if you get into a following sea and your boat gets pushed real hard, you got this full tilt locked down, your line goes over the stretch that it, it's you know scientifically designed to do because it's monofilament, all of a sudden it snaps and you lose your gear. A number six planer averages about $30. That's not a good thing if you lose your whole setup. Take this advice for what it's worth, and use braid when planer trolling. And that's the science of how you set your drag for planer trolling in a nutshell. And trust me, once you get this down, you're gonna be beyond the learning curve of how to really planer troll. The two tricky points of learning to troll with a planer are number one, getting your planer to set, getting that rod to bend over and realize that it's set. And number two, learning to deal with your drag and get it set properly. Get it in that sweet spot. So every time you go to lock it up, you know pretty much precisely where to push that lever to and you're good to go. Planer trolling catches an abundance of species. You're gonna catch fish like kingfish. You're gonna catch nice wahoo with it. I mean, look it, you can catch big wahoo. You're gonna catch your fair share of false albacore, most definitely. And on occasion, you're gonna catch fish like mahi-mahi. You're also gonna catch tuna with it. Down here in Southeast Florida, you'll be looking for blackfin and skipjack. Also, if you're trolling the reef and you're in shallow enough, you will pick up the ever so random mutton snapper on planer. And so there you have it, folks. That is the most simple way I know of how to explain how to learn to set your drag when it comes to planer trolling. It's not a numbers game. It has nothing to do with, oh, I'm using 80 pound braid on a number six planer. I'm in a hundred feet of water. It, it's not mathematical like that. It's a feel thing. You need to learn what your, how your reel is going to react to the conditions you're in. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about how to set your drag when you're playing a troll. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.